You're planning to buy your first group of blue velvet shrimp. Now picture how thrilled you'll be when you notice that some of the females are carrying eggs. At that point, you'll realize that pretty soon, there will be a bunch of shrimplets swimming around in your tank. But before you reach this exciting point, there are a couple of important things you should understand. So let's dive right in. Now, before I begin, it's important to mention that the upcoming information isn't just about breeding blue velvet shrimp. It also applies to other types of Neocaridina shrimp, such as red cherry shrimp, yellow laser shrimp, and green jade shrimp, among others. When you're selecting a shrimp at your local fish store, ask them to provide you with the highest quality color grade they offer. What this means is you'll want females that have a deep, vibrant, and solid color all over their bodies. If you see any transparent spots or differences in color, those would be considered a lower grade. One thing to note is that male shrimp usually aren't as colorful as females. Another important factor to consider while selecting your shrimp is the ratio of males to females. Aim to have around one male for every three females. This is because when females mate, they're in a delicate state since they've recently molted. They tend to be fragile and not very strong during this time. If too many males try to mate with the female, she can get really stressed out and even die. To avoid this, having fewer males pursuing a female helps prevent her from getting too tired and potentially dying. Breeding near carried in a shrimp is actually quite simple, but their tank needs to have the right parameters. First, your tank needs to be set up and fully established. This means that it should have gone through the nitrogen cycle. Next, the temperature of your tank is important. It should be around 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's too cold, your shrimp won't breed. If it's too warm, they might breed a lot, but their lifespan becomes shorter. You might also notice new shrimp being smaller in size. If you're making a tank just for breeding, having some java moss in there is great. If you plan on making a display tank, lots of plants and driftwood will be beneficial. With either type of tank, this will ensure your shrimp have a space to retreat to, whether it be to molt, mate, or give birth. Lastly, you'll want to have either an aerator, sponge filter, or hang on the back filter to help keep the water clean and oxygenated. Now that you've selected your shrimp and set up their tank, it's important to understand the four stages of the shrimp's pregnancy cycle and what signs to watch for. Stage 1 signifies that the female shrimp has reached sexual maturity and is ready to mate. During this time, the eggs develop in her ovaries, which are located behind her head. This is where you'll notice a red, yellow, or green patch. This patch is called a saddle, and it holds all the unfertilized eggs. When the saddle grows towards the downward curve of her tail, it'll be time for fertilization. This is where the second stage of the pregnancy cycle begins. In stage 2, the eggs on the female shrimp's body are moved to her legs. This helps her carry the eggs more easily. When she's ready to have the eggs fertilized, she will hide, often among the plants and hardscape in the tank. While hiding, she releases pheromones to attract male shrimp. It usually takes about one to three weeks for a healthy male shrimp to find her and mate with her to fertilize the eggs. Stage three is called the buried stage. During this time, you'll see the female shrimp displaying a specific behavior. She'll start fanning her tail to make sure the fertilized eggs get enough oxygen. This helps the eggs grow properly and stay healthy. Finally, after about a month has passed, the female shrimp will release her hatchlings and give birth to shrimplets. This is the fourth and final stage. One of the most common signs during this stage is that you'll notice a female shrimp going into hiding. She will search for hidden spots with biofilm to feed her babies. If you notice that the pregnant shrimp has gone missing, you can consider that a sign that new members will be joining the tank very soon. It's important to note that if your tank has a hang on the back filter, it's a good idea to put a pre-filter sponge over the intake. The pre-filter sponge will keep your shrimplets safe as it will block them from getting pulled into the filter. When it's time to feed your shrimplets, you have options besides having them rely only on biofilm. You can feed them a product called Shrimp Baby, which is made by Glass Garden. This food is rich in protein, natural vitamins, minerals, and various other ingredients that are important for healthy growth. You can check the description below for more information on Shrimp Baby by Glass Garden. Now that you understand the requirements, process, and care for breeding blue velvet shrimp, or any other Neocaridina shrimp, I wish you the best of luck in your shrimp breeding journey. If you liked this video and found it useful, I'd appreciate it if you could consider subscribing. Stay tuned for my upcoming content, but in the meantime, check out the following video where I show you how to create a thriving environment for your shrimp. I'm Andy, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.